You know, uh, a year ago, I had an opportunity to walk through a medium-sized city. And while I was walking, I noticed on the street in a cafe, a number of entrepreneurs with their laptops open working on their next new product. I moved to a coffee shop and heard over, over, overheard some folks talking about blockchain technology and cyber currency. Later that day, I was a, a judge on a panel judging startups and their ideas. Later that night, we awarded them a $10,000 check. The following day, I met with a community of technologists, 150 of them, um, where we networked and exchanged business cards and talked about the next new thing. You know, I've always been envious of startup communities. You know, I always wanted to bring that to this region. You know, the Silicon Valleys, the Pittsburghs, the Boston I-28 corridor. Well, you know, I'm really not that envious anymore because the city I was talking about was Harrisburg. You know, and I believe that through technology, we have an opportunity to make an incredibly positive impact on the local economy. Everybody knows about the trials and tribulations of the Harrisburg economy, right? I'm not gonna revisit that. This is not about the past, this is about the future. But I do believe that we can accelerate the recovery of Harrisburg's economy by fostering and nurturing an innovation economy built on innovative technology, technologists that bring that to, to fore, and support that, uh, that particular ecosystem. And it's all about innovation, right? All about innovation. So what is that? Everybody's probably familiar or heard about Moore's Law, right? Moore's Law basically states this, microprocessors and computing power doubles every 24 months. And we've seen this, right? The computer we had 10 years ago is much less powerful than the computer we have today. And this law is held up for about 30 years. It's linear. Every two years, processing power doubles. But what happens when the time it takes to double begins to shrink? What happens when the power of technology shrinks every year and a half, and then a year, and then six months, and then three months? Instead of a linear curve, we get an exponential curve. And with exponential innovation, we end up building incredibly disruptive models in our business world. So what's an example of that? Uber, seven years old, right? Seven years old. And in seven years, they've been able to completely change, not the taxi cab industry, the transportation industry, right? In seven years, they've been able to deliver two billion rides to 15 million different people across 400 cities. In doing so, they've changed sort of the economics of the taxi industry, but in doing so, They've also created different opportunities because now Uber's delivering food, Uber's thinking about delivering packages, and what's that gonna do to UPS and Federal Express? It's gonna change the delivery industry. So exponential technologies grow rapidly, and they have a deep disruptive impact on the underlying ecosystem, under the underlying economy. So why is this important to us? You know, what's in it for us? Well, disruption, has the ability to change an economic environment. It has the ability to cause the demand for labor to go up, the demand for buildings, the demand for infrastructure. So let's talk a little bit about a particular disruptive technology. Let's talk about artificial intelligence. Let's talk about robotics. So let's talk about adoption rates. <laughs> it took 75 years for the telephone to reach 50 million users, right? It took three and a half years for Facebook to reach 50 million users. Just last month, it took 19 days for Pokemon Go <laughs> to reach 50 million users. Acceleration, right? Acceleration. And so this rapid adoption rate has led to a rapid innovation rate. And this rapid innovation rate, again, is something that we see in artificial intelligence and robotics. So what does that mean? You know, everybody, you know, talks about it. Are the robots coming for our jobs? Probably, right? Because if it can be automated, it will. And traditionally, it's been the blue collar job that's been automated away, right? We've seen that, and Uber's doing it, and several other companies are doing it, but it's also coming after white collar jobs, right? With deep learning technologies, the computer can teach itself. It can 
move across vast amount of data, vast amounts of data, and learn. And what are the use cases? A computer technology AI has the ability to read an X-ray and an MRA, MRI more accurately than a radiologist. It can recognize pictures, pictures of your dog, pictures of your cat, pictures of objects, right? Um, these technologies are, are, are disruptive, and they're going to put people out of work. Um, you know, it's clearly the case. Citibank, the World Economic Forum, and the World Bank just published a study recently that says between 2015 and 2020, 5 million U.S. jobs, many of them white collar, will be removed, eliminated. 5 million. What happens after 2020? It's a good question, right? It's a very good question. So after 2020, let's assume the curve approaches an exponential lift. Could it be 10 million jobs eliminated in 2021? Maybe 15? It's very possible. And so what we have to be able to do, we have to be able to anticipate these exponential curves, these exponential disruptions, and take advantage of them. And fortunately, you know, in the Harrisburg region, we, we, we have the infrastructure to do that. Harrisburg University right up the street is minting brand new computer, sciences and tech, computer scientists and technologists who are schooled in AI, virtual reality, augmented reality, computer science, right? So we have to take advantage of that. Innovation and the innovation economy is something we need here. So how are we going to do that? 22 technology companies have moved into the city. 22 over the past four or five years. And they're doing the things I just described. Big data, right? Big data. Do you realize that every day 2.5 quintillion bytes of data are collected across the globe? Put that in perspective. That's a one with 18 zeros after it. Another. It's a million one terabyte hard drives. Another, if we stack those one million terabyte hard drives, they'd be 12 miles high every day. And it's this big data that feeds into the AI, that feeds into the disruptive technologies that will be created in our region. And many of those businesses exist today. Genia Institute, located in Capitol View, uh, up on uh, Cameron Street, is building a complete infrastructure to predict healthcare outcomes predictive analytics. You saw the doctor the other day. Your diagnosis was perhaps something related to diabetes. Based upon your weight, based upon your heart rate, your age, your genetic background, it can begin to predict um, adverse outcomes in the future. And what happens then? Well, you're monitored more carefully. You might see your doctor more frequently. A nurse may call. Your meds might be monitored. Uh, your life's changed probably for the better. And you know what's in it for them? Well, the healthcare companies want to spend less. What's in it for you? You're going to live longer. You're going to have a better, more positive life. That's happening at Genia. At Work Express on Market Street, a group of technologists are creating the next wave of application development, citizen computing. Hey, imagine if, and assuming you're not a programmer, can create your own software can solve your own business problem without spending the money to call in a computer developer or programmer. Now, that puts my company out of business. That's probably disruptive, but it's powerful, and it's happening here. Those are just two stories, two stories about a cluster. But from a cluster grows a district. There's one important concept in economic development, and again, an important concept that will help Harrisburg accelerate the recovery. And there's this notion of an innovation district. Today we have 20 companies clustered around five or six economic development organizations, Credic, the Chamber, the Tech Council, Ben Franklin Technology Partners. But out of a cluster can become a district and a district of movement. So what's an innovation district? Well, one, as I mentioned, it's dense. These technologies, technology companies cluster around a group together. Why do they like that? Collaboration, right? Collaboration. The ability to share ideas. Sure, there might be competitors, but more often than not, they're collaborators. The next characteristic of an innovation district is networking. And not networking in the truest sense, not social networking, not networking between you and me. It's networking between the startups, the technology companies, and the institutions that make up the region. The in education institutions, the 
the economic development institutions. And the closer they're co-located, the more powerful and the more symbiotic the relationship. Lastly, innovation districts have one primary characteristics. They take advantage of the concept of live, work, play. So what innovation districts require and what most technology companies require is the ability for people to walk the district, to move from place to place without taking a car, to enjoy the placemaking that goes on inside those districts. What does that mean? Well, it's higher demand for housing. It's higher demand for office space. It's a economic injection into the region and the neighborhoods that surround the innovation district. Enrico Moretti, an economist, has been studying innovation districts for a long time, and he was able to uh, come up with an equation, and it's a compelling equation. For every technical job in an innovation district, two more techni technology jobs are created, and three non-technology jobs are created over time. One gets you five. Five jobs get you a tax base. Five jobs get you residents, which increases the tax base, which increases the demand for services, which increases, again, the population. It's a virtuous circle, one that can be, and it is being catalyzed in our downtown districts. So if you start thinking about where we should be, where we should consider focusing our efforts, at least from an economic development perspective, there are many options. Brian offered one, Art. I offer another. Economic development and focus on a movement that's already in place. And that's a downtown innovation district in and around Market Street, Third Street, Fourth Street, and the Cameron Corridor. So let me offer you this. And I don't want to be standing between you and a frosty cold one here. <laughs> I am the last one. Let me offer you this four years from now. A presidential candidate is ready to visit the Harrisburg region. She boards her plane. She's on approach to Harrisburg International Airport. She looks out the window. What does she see? She lands. She takes a tour of Midtown. She takes a tour of downtown. She's getting ready to address the crowd. What does she say? We have the ability to write that script, right? We have the ability to dictate what that candidate says. Alan Kay once said that the best way to predict the future is to invent it, right? We have the ability to invent that story. Thank you. <laughs>